It just doesn't work anymore. In fact, it hasn't worked for a very long time. What am I talking about? Going to college and getting a degree for the most part, unfortunately, guys. It's pretty ridiculous when somebody can go to college and spend, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars on tuition, get a degree, and waste four years of their life, and then end up working at a restaurant and making more money serving and waiting tables than if you would have pursued your career that you got your degree for. I mean, that's what things are coming down to. And here's the thing, guys, this is not really a new thing. There's a new story on this, which is why I wanted to make a video about it and kind of prompted me to talk about this. But in reality, this has been going on for a very long time. There's a girl called Genevieve Sloboda. She has a TikTok channel and she put out a video that supposedly went viral talking about how after graduating with a master's degree in education, none of the jobs that she's able to get in her field even pay enough to cover her rent. And apparently she's my, she's my neighbor. She's right up here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And not to criticize her too much, but how would you not know how much you're gonna be making working at the job you're gonna be going for, especially spending all this time getting a master's degree. You would think that would be something on your checklist of, hey, maybe I should take a look at, uh, you know, what this job's even gonna pay me, and if it's worth spending all this time, you know, going down this road for, because you might be surprised like this person was. Here we have a house that was asking 1.4 million and is under contract for sale and was a rental property ever since 2009. They purchased this home for 155,000 all the way back then and now they're selling probably somewhere in their 1.2, 1.3 million range. But if you look at the history of this home, it kind of tells you the direction of the Miami market right now. They tried selling it in 2022 for 1.5 and they couldn't get it. And now they're trying to sell it for 1.4 and probably have it under contract for somewhere less than that. So in general, this house has declined in value at least $100,000, $150,000 in the last year and a half or so. And that's a lot of money. That's a big price cut. On top of that, they have a property tax bill of $22,000 a year. But overall, these guys are making a fortune selling this house. Now the saddest part to me about all this is she wanted to get into education because it's something that she loved, right? So it's something that she could see herself doing long-term, making a difference in society, et cetera. How you doing? Good, good. She's not gonna do it because the money's not there. And that's where things are coming down to, guys. Like you, people need to go where they can make the money right now because that's the only way to survive in this economy. So apparently jobs in her field pay at about $61,000 a year, according to the BLS, which is the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So just to pay the average rent, which is about $2,100 a month right now, she would be paying over 41% of her income just on that, if she was taking the teaching job. And here's the thing, on the surface, it looks like you know, waiters and waitresses don't make as much as a teacher, right? Because according to the BLS, being a waiter only pays about $29,000 a year. But that probably doesn't include a lot of the money that they get paid in tips because a lot of that is cash. Now, the reality is if you're earning all this extra cash and you're not reporting it to the IRS, then you're basically cheating the government out of taxes. And if you ever get audited, you could be in big trouble and owe a lot of money in back taxes and penalties, etc. Here we have a house for sale for almost 2.4 million and they purchased this house back in 2015 for only 699,000. Every time I see these numbers, it's just baffling to me. Even in 2013, it was purchased at 560,000. You see, that's like two years apart and the price didn't go up nearly as much as the numbers we're seeing today. It's just absolutely stunning, really. And uh, who knows if they'll get that much, but let's see. Property taxes on this house only $11,000 a year, which is pretty low for a house this expensive, so they must have a homestead exemption. Let's see if they sell it. But the other problem with being a teacher is it's a salaried position. When you work a salaried position, you're expected to do all of the work necessary to make sure the job's getting done properly. So it doesn't just include all the classroom time in the actual class with the kids as a teacher, but it also includes, you know, grading papers, it also includes lesson planning, talking to parents, 
you know, different things like that, staff meetings, that can all take up an extra amount of time. And they say when you break it down on an hourly basis, somebody like this girl Genevieve could actually come out ahead on an hourly basis working at a restaurant versus being a teacher. And obviously there's more flexibility too, but it's just not worth it anymore because take a look at this. According to the Education Data Initiative, in order to get a master's degree, somebody owes anywhere between 53 and $88,000 in student loan debt right now to pay for all that. And that when you have a master's degree, your average salary is about $86,000 a year, which is a good salary, but you'll be taking all that extra income that you're making just to pay off your student loan debt. Now, obviously there's no getting around this. You have to go to school and get an advanced degree if you wanna become a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. Everybody knows that, but I mean, stuff like teaching right now, and you, you really have to look at what you're gonna be going to school for and what you really think you're gonna be able to make, guys. Don't just take the school's word for it because they're trying to sell you a degree, first of all. Like, they want you to go and pay tuition. They don't care if you get a job after school or not. That's not their problem. But this really just goes to show you how important it is to research ahead of time what you're gonna be doing for a living and how much you can realistically make with that profession where you live because if it's not up to par you might as well just do something else and think about just not the money but the amount of time saved as well like say you got to spend four years in college and you can just be working earning money and saving and investing that entire four years rather than wasting it in school and going further into debt you're going to probably come out a lot further ahead in the end than somebody who graduates with that debt and is using all their excess income to pay it off for years and years and years and meanwhile you're sitting there saving 500 to a thousand dollars a month because your expenses are lower and you can still make a decent amount of money now i can't sit here and tell anybody out there oh you definitely don't want to go to college because it depends on what you want to do and what kind of life you want to live and i'm not your mom and i'm not your dad okay but I didn't go to college and you know what guys, I personally will say I think it's one of the best financial decisions I've ever made my entire life. I think I earn a lot more money than I ever would have earned if um, I didn't go to college as an entrepreneur and I love the flexibility and the freedom of having my own business and there's no way I would trade those things for being stuck at some job somewhere that I really don't like and making a salary and having my income being capped, okay? Because the other thing you gotta look at besides just how much money can I make the degree job versus a different job is what about, you know, retirement, okay? Retirement, I think, is becoming basically only for the rich. Like, you're never really gonna retire anymore based on what people are saving, guys. And I have the proof here to show you. I mean, the numbers are just catastrophic, to be honest. So according to a 2023 study, Americans believe they need about $1.3 million to retire comfortably. I would argue that that number is probably actually a lot higher, depending on where you live and your lifestyle. But Americans in their 30s, okay, their median 401k balance is only $20,400 right now, according to the latest data from Fidelity Investments. What are the reasons for this? Well, they say that it's because the rising cost of living is preventing them from making contributions or the amount of contributions that they should be. So a lot of their money is just going towards existing, which we all know. We talk about this every single week here on the channel. And on top of that, people have debt. They have student loan debt. They have credit card debt. They have auto loan debt. And while you're paying all this stuff down, guess what you're not doing? You're not contributing to your retirement. I mean, just take a look at this chart, okay? If you're in your 20s, the average 401k balance is 16 grand. In your 30s, it's 51,000. And in your 40s, it's 115,000. Even people in their 50s, guys, who are approaching retirement, average 401k balance is barely 200k. And those are the average balances. The median balances, as you can see, are much lower than that. And those numbers are a lot scarier, actually. And as if that's not bad enough, at the same time right now, we have a record amount of people who are borrowing money against their 401k, taking money out because they need that money to pay their bills. That's how dire the situation is right now. So tell me this, how in the world is anybody supposed to get ahead and save for retirement 
while they're simultaneously taking money out of their retirement just to pay for life today. Tell me how the math on that works out in the long run. You know what well, the funny thing is guys, like there's this whole notion that we've heard over the past 30 or 40 years that oh you gotta go to college to get a good job and to have a good life and all of this. And you look at all the world's top CEOs, all the world's biggest entrepreneurs, most of them don't have a college education. And if they do, they're the rare ones. And it just goes to show you that you don't need that in order to be successful in life. The people who make the most money in this world probably don't even have a college degree. And then it's kind of hilarious because the people who wrote this article from CNBC, this lady goes, oh, you got plenty of time if you're in your 30s. No, you're just gonna have to end up saving more money at a more aggressive rate than if you started earlier and that's fine. Okay, right now they say people in their 30s put about 11% of their salaries toward retirement and Fidelity recommends about 15%. So that's below what people should be contributing to actually get towards retirement. Now let's just backtrack here for a minute. Going back to the chart, even people in their 50s have barely 200K in their 401k and those people had a huge head start right they were able to work and make decent money back when twenty dollars an hour was a good wage to earn right so they were able to contribute all these years to that take advantage of some of the best bull market runs we've had in the stock market in history and they still only have 200k how much is 200k today guys say you're retiring in five or ten years even if they build that up to 400k is that going to be enough for them to really retire on, especially when most people think they need 1.3 million, it's not even close. Which is why I would say at this point, retirement is just a pipe dream for most people. It's never gonna happen, guys, unless you hit the lottery, unless you get a nice inheritance from a rich family member, unless you're able to earn a ton of money each year and you're savvy at stacking it away and investing it, there's no chance for the average person to retire if you don't fit into those categories. It's just not gonna happen. And get this, you know what they tell people to do? They say one way to boost your savings rate without feeling like you're sacrificing too much is to contribute one or two percent more each year, okay? And many retirement plans will automatically do this through an auto escalation feature so you don't have to remember to change your contribution amount each year. And then they say if you don't have anything saved for retirement, you may need to make some short-term sacrifices such as contributing a larger percentage of any raises you receive towards a 401k or setting aside a larger chunk of any future bonuses or tax refunds. So in other words, go live in the van down by the river so you can afford to retire one day. Doesn't that sound like a nice life? Basically become the working homeless so that way one day you might have enough money in the 401k not to work. Because that's the only way you're gonna be able to make these sacrifices because people can't even pay the bills with the money they're making let alone make any further sacrifices in a lot of cases. And you know, here's the other thing that's hilarious about this advice, okay? You're supposed to contribute more money over time as inflation continues to drive down the value of our currency, and you're supposed to live on less as things get more expensive. That's the plan, to save more for retirement here. It's not me saying this, that's what the experts say you should do. So learn to contribute more as time goes on and live on less as the cost of living continues to rise. Sounds like a perfect plan. What could possibly go wrong? Which when you hear stories like this, it's no wonder why this is happening here. You have half of the parents right now out there in this country that have a child that's 18 years or older are supporting them financially in some way, shape or form, guys. So that's half. Half of adult children over 18 are still receiving an allowance from their parents to live right now. And I understand that the cost of living is out of control. We just went over all of this and we go over it all the time in the videos and that's why this is happening. But at the same time, if people never learn to do anything on their own, like these children that are continually receiving parental support financially, then they're just going to be handicapped in the long run, you know? Imagine learning to sink or swim in an environment like this and you learn to swim you'll be unstoppable in the future. If you can survive this economy with this cost of living and this level of inflation, you'll be able to do anything, guys. It's probably just gonna get easier one day. It's not gonna get harder than this. It's never been this hard, which is my biggest case of why I think it's all gonna come crashing down here sooner than later, because things can't continue being this expensive for this long and have everybody just continue to pay for all this stuff indefinitely.
because people can't afford to pay for this stuff. We have yet another listing for sale for 1.38 million and they purchased this house all the way back in 2011 for only 325,000 and once again just a staggering increase and I think a lot of people are just saying you know what I might as well cash out now take all this money and run and go somewhere cheaper because the insurance and property taxes on these houses are probably exploding although in this case their property tax bill is lower than mine at only $6,300 a year but still the insurance is probably climbing and they're like you know what let's just take the money and go it's a great time to sell still and get that money and let somebody else deal with the headache of owning this house And it's not even just the fact that they're giving kids an allowance, but the amount that they're giving is kind of staggering, guys. The average amount that people are giving their kids is about $1,400 a month. That's a lot of money. I wish I was getting $1,400 a month from my parents. Now, I know a lot of parents probably look at this as like, well, I was able to make a lot of money in my life. I was able to have a good run with this and that. You know, I have a bunch of money saved. Why not give it to my kid? Okay, that's fine but you're basically handicapping them for the future and they're not gonna learn how to make it on their own is the biggest problem with all of this. And to make matters worse, 58% of parents said that they would sacrifice their own financial security right now to help their children. I understand that parents love their children, but ultimately, you're both gonna be in the poorhouse if you, if you can't afford anything, guys. If you're paying all your kids' bills and you're gonna do that at your own detriment, once you can't pay your bills, then who's going to pay your bills? Because your kids aren't going to be able to do anything for you. You're all going to be screwed at that point. So it just goes to show you the level of absurdity with this, that half of the parents out there would risk going into financial ruin just to keep their kids afloat an extra month. I mean, it makes no sense. I mean, I can understand saying, okay, you can't make it, times are tough, whatever, come move in with me temporarily until things get better and you get back on your feet. I always understand that. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with parents doing that. And that's a different situation than continuing to give your uh, kids a monthly allowance into adulthood because it's too hard. As a millennial, I grew up in a tough economy too, guys. Like, I turned 20 years old and then wham, came the 2008 housing recession. And really it was, it was a global financial crisis is what it was. And back then, there also wasn't nearly as many opportunities as there are today, especially with all the things that the internet has made possible. So even though things cost more today than they did back then, there wasn't as many ways to make money back then. And things were still relatively expensive for how much you could make. I mean, we're talking back then, you'd be lucky if you're making $700 a week. That was good money back then. You know, now you can't even pay your bills on that. And guess how I was able to make that $700 a week? Working at a restaurant, just like this girl in the beginning, you know? I didn't go to college. I didn't have any special skills or anything to get me a great job. And that was, that was it. And then I got into selling real estate. And once I started to learn to work for myself, that changed my entire life, okay? It changes your perspective because to me, at least my personal outlook on this was, you're gonna work way harder for yourself than you ever will for somebody else, okay? When you work a job, you're being told what to do. You have things that you have to get done as per the boss. And once that's done, you have no incentive to work harder or do more because you're either getting your salary or you're getting, you're getting paid by the hour. Once the job is done, you go home, okay? But when you work for yourself, there's a whole new level of pride that you take in your work that you just don't get when you work a regular job. At least I don't think you do. Because now every single extra hour you put in towards building your business or building your brand, whatever it is, is going to benefit you and pay you dividends down the line. Whereas doing that at a regular job, if you're lucky, might get you a small raise and that's about it. And then some people might say, well, Michael, everybody can't be an entrepreneur. We still need to have doctors and lawyers and this and that, da, 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 da. Well, guess what? Rewind about 200 years ago, everybody was an entrepreneur, guys. There was no college. There was none of this stuff that people had to get degrees to get certain jobs or anything. Everybody had their own business. You need something done with your house, you hire a carpenter. You need to hire a blacksmith, you hire them. You need new shoes made, you hire the cobbler. Everybody had some sort of skill that they knew how to do and they could sell that or trade it with somebody else with a skill or good that that person needed from them. Whether it was through a bartering system or through 
actually trading money. Even back then, doctors, right? Doctors were entrepreneurs. A lot of doctors today are still entrepreneurs, but no degree necessary, right? They studied the human body. They did things they could to learn how can I help someone feel better if they're sick or if they have a problem. And through trial and error and through apprenticeship and experience, that's what they did and it just worked out okay. It was just fine. You can even argue that today's system is so much worse because it's all filled with so much red tape, especially in the medical field. You know, you gotta go through eight different doctors to get, you know, an opinion on anything and, oh, this person only knows one thing about this and you gotta go see a specialist about something else. It's a ridiculous, it's a joke, guys. Versus having one doctor back in the day that just knows a little bit about everything and actually took pride in what they did because they were the only ones that knew how to help everybody in the town feel better if they were sick. Nowadays, it's all just a racket. Nowadays, it's all just collecting the insurance premiums, you know, and doing, giving people 10 minute visits and, you know, squeezing as many people through the factory each day as possible. No doctor cares anymore. At least I haven't met any that do. Now here's something else, guys. Everybody's complaining they're broke. People don't have the money. They, they need to take 401k loans. They don't have money to pay the credit cards. But look at this. The IRS recently announced that there is 940,000 unclaimed tax refunds from 2020 that are about to expire, okay? And it's more than $1 billion on the table right now that's gonna go up in smoke if people don't claim this. They said the average median refund is $932 for 2020. They say Texas, California, Florida, and New York had the largest amount of people potentially eligible for these refunds. Guess what? All really high cost of living states where people could really use the money Go get the money, guys. You only have until May 17th to file a return and get this money. So time is ticking and running out to get it. Oh, wow, look at this. Look at all the little chicks, all little ducks. There's so many of them. Beautiful. I love when we just see something beautiful and unexpected on these walks. So you usually only have about three years to ever file a tax return and get a refund, guys. So the time's running out for 2020. Go get the money if you're owed it. If you don't know how to do it, speak to an accountant for help. There's no excuses that people let this $1 billion go because after it's gone, guess what? It's gonna be property of the US Treasury. No one's ever gonna see that money again. And I think the government already steals enough money from us, so you need to go out there and get it. So. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.